Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch. And if you spent any time here on this channel, you probably know two things at this point. One, uh, about Blender, that Blender is a great open source free uh, 3D application. And two, I'm a big fan of it. But what you might not have known is that uh, Blender is also a full featured nonlinear video editing solution, something along the lines of Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas. So you can actually use it to organize, edit, um, composite video. Um, and that's exactly what we're gonna look at today. So if you need to do things like add a watermark to your video or do special effects, etc., uh, Blender is an option for you. And of course, it is completely free and open source. Without further ado, let's jump in and look at some vet, um, video editing tasks using Blender. Uh, here you go. This is Blender 2.79, as you can see right here. Uh, this functionality has been around forever, though, so you don't need the newest version by any means whatsoever. And welcome to default Blender. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take a look over here in the rendering tab. And this is a very important setting. This frame rate is going to be the default frame rate that your video is working at. And what I want to do is just go ahead and change that up to 30 frames per second. Uh, 24 frames per second is your standard North American NTSC uh, value. Uh, 30 is quite often used in games, 30 or 60, etc. So I'm going to edit this video at 30 frames per second. And that's because the video source I captured was also at 30 frames per second. So it's easier to just keep everything consistent. So without further ado, come up over here to your um, your view mode and switch over to video editing like so. And you'll see the screen was completely changed over. And now here is where you can basically composite videos together. If you've ever used, um, say, Photoshop or a program like that that has layers, it, it's very similar in scope. Instead, we're going to have channels. And these work on the channels that are above and below them, just like what you're used to. And in this particular case, they're called strips. So we're going to add, and we can add um, movie strip, image strip, sound strip, etc. We'll start off straight away. Let's bring in a movie. Um, so go ahead and grab a movie file. I've dumped it on my desktop, so it should be available there. And it's just a simple, just over one minute capture of uh, some Pillars of Eternity gameplay. So go ahead and press play. You can see it's split it out into an audio channel and the video channel you can see here. And the cool thing is you can select the audio channel and all of your controls are the exact same as what you're using for Blender. So you can use X to delete, G to grab and move things around, S to scale. Um, your zoom in and zoom out are the same controls that you're used to. Panning controls are the exact same as you're used to. So if you've already figured out Blender, you're set and off to the race. It's the same thing here. Your timeline is the exact same as if you were editing um, animations in Blender. So you go see we got this video here. We'll go select it. Um, so there's the sound file selected. And I can do things like show it the waveform. So we can actually see um, the waveform over time. We can also zoom in and out this guy. We can pan it left and right. So this is our timeline. There's the active timeline. That's 0 to 250. You can see down here from the end frame. Instead, what we're going to do is select our video. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to find its length. So this video is uh, 1939 frames. Uh, so what we're just going to do is come on down here and set our video length to match it. So now it's scaled out. You can see there it matches up to our total video length. And we can play this out. You can see the end result. Now it's going to struggle a bit. It doesn't use the GPU for this. So it's going to beat on my... Oh, there's our audio in the background. What? It is not actually cutting out. I actually canceled it during the default sounds that they're using. So that's what you're hearing. And we don't really need that audio. So I'm just going to grab it right here and we'll just delete that. So we've got no more audio. We just have our video strip. So now what all can we do with this guy? Well, there's quite a bit we can do actually. Um, one of the most common tasks you're going to do when vid editing video is often say put a watermark or a logo in. So let's start off with that. So I'm going to come in here and go add um, effect strip and then um, sorry, add image like so. And I'll just bring in the game from scratch logo. Now, by default, they take whatever you add in and stretch it to match your entire uh, full screen. And that's obviously not what you want to do. So what I want to do now, uh, we'll set it so this guy's the same length as this guy. So this guy was 1939. So grab our image channel and we'll set its length to 1939 as well. So that image will be there for the entire time. Now, with this guy currently still selected, we're going to add another channel to it. And it's effect strip and transform. And this guy will now scale this guy out. Now it's screwed up my aspect ratio, so we're gonna do this independently. So you can do a uniform scale, but I actually wanna scale each one on its own. So just grab this guy, this is your X and Y scale. We're just gonna scale it down and over. So it looks roughly like what we want. And now we can go ahead and position it as well. So we want it to be, say, up in this top right corner. So we can just do that with the X and Y position, like so. And we'll move it up like so. So now if we press play, we will now see nothing. 
Now, why is this? Well, this is because of blending modes. Now, if you've ever used, again, a photo imaging editor of such as GIMP or Photoshop, you understand probably blending modes. And that's what the effect is here. So this transform strip we added on top, you'll see down here it's got blend mode. And blend mode is set to replace, which is not what we want because that completely ignores the alpha channel. So all the transparent parts, this whole section just won't be drawn to what's underneath. So you can do a couple of options. You can do this with an alpha over, alpha under, or overdrop. I'm just going to do an overdrop. So now you can see there is our logo showing at the top. Very cool. And we got exactly what we want so far. So now we can do a couple of uh, very, very cool other features. If we wanted, we could have, for example, so I'm going to grab our main video again. And if we want to do subtitles, we could do that as well. Unfortunately, what we can't do, or at least can't do easily, is change the font for this. But we can do go ahead and go add. And then we go down here and go effect strip text. We set the length of the text. So this is how long our text will show up. Uh, we, can, we can move it from end to end. So we can have it start on frame 117 and continue on. And then obviously we come down here and set our text. This is a subtitle. Now let's set it to the size and actually advance our frame so we can see it. So there you go. There is this is a subtitle showing up. We can change the size like so. And then again, when I play this out, it will start at that particular frame. And at this frame right here, it will stop display. Okay, I should have made that a little shorter. But as you can see, we're at the end and that fades out. And at the same time, you could also apply effects at such to it. Now where it gets really cool is when you start talking about animations. So what we can do, for example, let's play with our transform here on this guy. We'll go back to the very beginning here. Like so. And if you've ever done any keyframing, you know exactly what I'm about to do. Keyframes are essentially little bookmarks you do, and then the computer interpolates the results between them. So what I can say is, at this position, remember this here, and at this time, I want it to instead be here. And then you let the computer do the magic of figuring out how to resolve things in the meantime. You know, instead of uh, working on this guy, I'm actually gonna work on the text instead. So let's move to the uh, to about here in the timeline, so our text shows up. So we got our text selected, All right? So you see down here, we've got various different properties available for it. And the key one we want is the extra Y position. So what we're going to do is just drop this guy off screen. So what I want now, this guy is to be set the Y value and I'll hover over it like this and hit the I key and see how it just turned yellow. Uh, that's because there is now a default keyframe set, a key set. Now it's not going to do anything because we haven't changed anything like so. But what we're going to do is go to the very end of this. Actually, we'll go about halfway through and we'll set another key. And we want to actually stay with the same value. So hover over the value you're going to animate and then hit I again. So we set another key over time. You see they're being set here in this uh, graph editor. So you can edit the edit these using curves later on if you wish. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and basically just advance to okay, keep him selected. Advance slightly in the timeline. So I actually want to move forward a couple more. All right, so at the end of it, and now what I'm going to do is take the Y value. You see these are all over here. We'll take the Y value, and we will move this up and off the screen. And now, with that set, I'm going to hit I, and that key is set. So now what you can see is if I go back to the very beginning of this animation, so right here, and now we press play, you'll see it does nothing for half. And then once it gets to that first key that I set, it'll now animate and go off the screen. So if you want to do your Star Wars scrolling text or whatever, this is one way of doing it. And any property over here can generally be keyframed in this manner. So you're basically animating the change in value over time. Um, and that's exactly what uh, we just did there. So it's a pretty cool uh, functionality that you can add in there. And that's just kind of the beginning of it. There's a number of different strips. We're not gonna get into all of them or really much any of them. Uh, so you saw we, we did an image over time like so. We could also keyframe it to fade out over time if we wish. We could change its opacity over time using a keyframe. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do. So you can do fade in, fade outs using um, the opacity and the keyframe. Uh, we can also do some pretty advanced animation effects. I'll show you in a second some of the things we can do with the transform layer if we add one on this 
video, for example. Uh, come back here, I also show you. So if we go back to the effect strips, there are a number of different ones we can do here. So for example, we could do a color. So let me just pause our animation. This guy, and we'll move this channel to the, we'll move him up one. Actually, it's probably easier if I just delete this guy. So delete, I'm gonna do an A to grab everything, and then a G to move, and I'm gonna move everything up by one. Like so. So now we've got this free channel down here. We're gonna come down here and we'll go add effect strip color. And this is the color that'll show up. And let's change it to say blue. So now we have a blue color being shown in the background here. Now we're gonna do it. We'll change the start and end frame. So one, and I forget exactly how long this video was, but I'll just do this to 1800. So now we've got a blue background going here. Let's stretch that out so it matches. All right, so now we have a blue background available, like so, and it's not gonna show up because, well, it's in the background. So we'll actually do this also as an alpha under. Yeah, so we could use this as tinting, uh, by doing it as a uh, add, or we could subtract this color from the other channels, move it at the top, but basically this is on the bottom. So this is drawing over this, this is drawing over this, this is drawing over that, etc. So what we're gonna do with this background, so you'll actually be able to see it, is let's instead grab this guy right here. So this is our main uh, video channel. Say we wanna do some special effects with it. Now we could just, with it select to go add, and then effect strip, and we just go ahead and do another transform here. So this transform will apply to that layer specifically. Um, and we wanna change blend here to alpha over so that we don't get everything done and we can now over time once again we go back to the first frame uh, and we're gonna add we're gonna do the rotation so go over the rotation hit I and set the rotation to nothing and now let's advance forward to say here on the timeline and what we could do is basically rotate out like that and see now you're seeing that background um, being shown as we rotate. And then we could again, click I there. And now we'll show the end result. So you see, you can do um, pretty much advanced animations of your video in action. Okay, I did that on a pretty slow basis, but you can see the end result there. It will slowly be turning over time. So you can basically do transforms and animations, etc., on each different channel or strip as you see fit. And then one last cool thing I'm gonna show you here, and this is Blender. So obviously you're in 3D world. So if we look back here, we go back to the, you know, I'll pause that so that we're not dying. Go back to the very beginning strip. If I go back from default, sorry, from video editing to default, here is your default scene. Here we are from our camera, like so. The cool thing that we can actually do is composite this scene in. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. We'll make it instead use the monkey. So add mesh, um, monkey, uh, rotate the Z. Like so. so we can use anything in our scene. We could texture this guy, add a material to it, etc. But we have a 3D scene going on like so. What I can now do is go back into our, vidding, our video editing like so. I'm gonna actually add a new strip of type add, and this is a scene, and we add our existing scene in, and ta-da, there is our um, 3D scene basically being drawn on top. Now once again, it's drawing over everything, and there's a couple of reasons for this. First off, uh, we need to change its rendering setting so it's alpha mode instead of uh, sky have it go to uh, transparent so that it'll draw through and we have to change its blend mode so that it is done via using alpha but there is our scene being drawn over top of our imaging it's very powerful very cool stuff so you can actually integrate your 3d and your 2d together in this process and at the same time if i go on back to the 3d stuff um, so back here i could do something like uh, let's grab this guy right here. Let's go from the top. Um, I can move him here. I can go I, location, keyframe, and then say, same timeline. Say, like, go to, say, here, over here, do the location keyframe. So then we go back to our video. Back to the beginning. 
And now you will see that over time, our monkey or our 3D scene is actually being updated as well. So you can also use this to do some pretty advanced effects. You could bring the compositor in if you wished. It's it's pretty amazing what actually the video, uh, the Blender video editor is actually capable of doing. Um, so let's just jump forward in time so you can see. Uh, there he goes. He's starting to move a little bit faster now. So there it is, further on in time. So uh, once you're done and ready to go, basically just go on back to your rendering. So let's go back to default for now. Uh, rendering, click set your end frame, your start frame from here to here. So basically here to there, uh, click your animation button and it will generate the file um, that you need. Now this is gonna be very slow, unfortunately. Uh, so the process of rendering out, you know, 1900 frames for a, a second or for a minute of animation, it's gonna be obviously a little slow, uh, but it's all the same. It's, it's pretty powerful, pretty capable, pretty amazing what you can actually do with Blender here. Uh, so that's really just kind of scratching the surface of what we can do. Uh, there's a couple other strips available here that we didn't touch on. Uh, you can bring in audio effects. You can add your own sound uh, layers over top or do voiceovers or however you wish to um, composite in other audio effects. And then we've got a bunch of effects we can do here. So we can do uh, speed control. So you can speed up a time, um, speed up a video, slow down a video using that. Um, we, got, we could add blurs to things. We could add a blur to our um, our monkey, for example. We could just select that guy. And I go add effect strip. And then uh, Gaussian blur. Oh, so then again, the same thing just happened. So you got to make sure that your alpha is set to the right value. Like so down the opacity a little bit. Set the blur amount, and then over time that will blur across the screen. So there's a bunch of very, very, very cool things that you can actually do uh, with Blender as a video editor. And you can completely ignore the 3D stuff. That was completely optional, but it does show you what functionality is available to you. Now you will notice I am kicking my computer's butt. That's because this does not use the GPU. Uh, it can be a little slow. It's probably not the best performing option out there. Uh, but a lot of these video editing packages, like for example, I use Camtasia Studio for a lot of my 2D video editing, and that's still a two or three hundred dollar package. Um, and um, you know, Premiere, I think, is five or $600. So various different video editing softwares are not cheap. Uh, so if you have no options available, definitely free is a great price tag. But the performance can sometimes suffer a little bit. Just got to be aware of that up front. All right, that's it for now. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, of course, please do click that like button. We cover all kinds of stuff, mostly game development related. This one's kind of a little bit on the tangent, but as I said at the very beginning, I'm a big time fanboy of Blender, and a lot of people don't know about this functionality in there. And a lot of times you need to do simple things like add a watermark to a video, etc. And Blender is fully capable of doing that stuff, as you just saw today in this video. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, and uh, I will see you all later. Goodbye.